What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to an example, we have to show the function absolute value x minus 3 is not differentiable at an x value of 3. So before we get into the mechanics of showing it's not differentiable, let's graph this function here. And to graph it, it's basically the absolute value function shifted three units to the right. And so at that x value of three, there's going to be a corner there. And the function just looks like this. Right, so what we have to show is at that x value of three, which is a corner, notice if we plug in three here for x, we'll get zero, y value is zero. We have to show that the derivative doesn't exist at that point, that the function is not differentiable at that point. Now in the overview video, I mentioned that to show that, what we basically have to show that uh, if a function, if the derivative of a function at a certain x value a doesn't exist, we basically have to show that this limit here doesn't exist. Okay, so the function we're dealing with is this, and the x value of a, the a value is 3 that we're dealing with. So if I take these parameters, plug them in here, we're going to be working with the limit as h approaches 0 of f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 all over h. And so if we plug in these values here for this function, if we plug in 3 plus h for this x here, what we'll have is 3 plus h minus 3. Right? f of 3 plus h of f of x is defined by this function. We just plugged in 3 plus h, this expression, for the x, minus f of 3. f of 3 we know is 0, has a y value of 0. If we plug in 3 for x there. So this is going to be 0. And then this is going to be all over h. Now notice here inside the absolute value, those 3's net out to 0. 3 minus 3 is uh, 0. We have a 0 over here. So what we're going to be left with is the limit as h approaches 0 of the absolute value of h all over h. And notice that this limit here, very similar to limits we've done in the previous unit, where we talked about one-sided limits. And so to find this limit here, limit as h approaches 0 of absolute value of h all over h, I'm going to take this function and I'm going to graph it. And to do that, I'm going to actually change this first to a piecewise function. Because notice any absolute value we can always change to a piecewise function. So notice that this is going to equal h over h whenever h is greater than 0. If h is positive, then we don't have to do anything to this uh, numerator because remember, an absolute value takes everything and turns it to a positive. So if it's already positive, then we could just leave it as h. And that's going to be over this denominator h. However, what's going to happen if h is negative? Well, if h is negative, what we got to do is we got to take that h in the numerator and multiply it by a negative 1 to turn it positive. Right? So if this h here is negative, if it's less than 0, we got to multiply it by negative 1. And we're still going to be all over h. And notice that this function at an h value of 0 is undefined because that would make the denominator 0. So we only have cases when h is greater than 0, when h is less than 0. I do a lot of these examples in uh, when I covered one-sided limits, so if you didn't watch those videos, make sure you do before watching this video because a lot of the techniques are carrying over and I'm going to go through them a little bit more quickly in this video. So notice here we change this to this piecewise function 
And notice that we can simplify these now. h over h is just 1 when h is greater than 0. Notice negative h over h is equal to negative 1 when h is less than 0. And so if we take this here, or this, this and this are the same thing. If we graph it, notice that we have h as the, um, as the independent variable. And let's just say that these are y values here. Notice the y value is going to equal to 1 whenever h is greater than 0. So it's going to equal 1, which is just a horizontal line whenever h is greater than 0. And notice, remember, it's not defined at 0, so there's going to be a hole right there. So that's going to be 1. And then it's going to be negative 1 whenever h is less than 0, which would be like that. That's going to be a horizontal line at that y value of negative 1. And so notice that this limit, you can tell it doesn't exist because it's approaching different values from the left and right side. So to write this properly, the limit as h approaches 0 from the negative side of this function absolute value of h over h, as we approach 0 from the negative side, the y values are approaching negative 1. And then as we approach this h value 0 from the positive side, the y values are approaching positive 1. And so because they're approaching different values from both sides, this limit here does not exist. And remember, what was this limit? This limit was this simplified, the difference quotient, which was the derivative of f of x at that x value of 3, right, or f of prime 3. So since we showed that that limit doesn't exist, we showed that this function, absolute value of x minus 3, is not differentiable at that x value of 3. And to bring, uh, to bring back the graph of that original function, right, it looks like this. And so this is a case of a corner. Right? And this is basically how you show it. So whenever you have a function that has a corner like this, it's not going to be differentiable at that x value. And you've got to show it with the uh, difference quotient showing that that limit basically does not exist. Now, one thing I want to mention from this example that's kind of interesting is that uh, notice that the function is continuous at that x value of 3. Notice that there's a y value at that x value of 3. The y value is 0. And so an interesting observation here, a function can be continuous at an x value of a, but not differentiable. at that same x value. So this is a case of where that can happen. We're going to go over other cases as well. So just keep in mind, f of x can be continuous at a certain x value, but it doesn't necessarily have to be differentiable at that x value. And so basically, in short form, what this means is that continuity doesn't imply differentiability. Right? So just because a function is continuous, it doesn't imply that it's going to be differentiable at that x value. And another point I want to make is actually that the opposite is true, though. So if a function uh, is differentiable, so if f of x is differentiable, 
So if the derivative exists for a function at a certain x value, at an x value of a, then that means that f of x is continuous at that x value of a. Okay, so continuity doesn't imply differentiability, but differentiability does imply continuity. So we didn't really show an example of that uh, in this video, but thought I would mention it. Okay, so one more time, just because a function um, is continuous at a certain x value, it doesn't mean it's differentiable at that x value. However, if a function is differentiable at a certain x value, then that means it's going to be continuous at that x value. So continuity doesn't imply differentiability, but differentiability does imply continuity. So just wanted to mention that with uh, this specific example. And for this here, we're going to be doing a bunch of other cases in the next coming videos where we're going to have functions that are continuous like this one, but not differentiable at that x value.